Hi all, I'm Max Soto, a master's student at Texas Southern University, um, and today I wanted to talk about the effects of massage on the sports recovery. So I'm in a pretty unique setting in the fact that I get to work with professional athletes every day. So um, part of that is we actually um, do a lot of massage with the guys on a weekly basis. Um, so in the past, I've looked at treatments, how they compare to my home program at TLU, and how they compare to my clinical site with professional athletes. So for the evidence today, we have a randomized control trial and two systematic reviews or meta-analysis. So why is recovery important to us at uh, the elite level? First of all, we have an insane amount of games. Um, and so not only do we start games in, you know, mid-February, but we have preseason the second week of January um, that requires an insane amount of training. So we'll train from January and seasons can go all the way up to um, November, depending on playoffs and whether the team qualifies or not. So... Um, we have one game every week, and then through that, um, a lot of our guys will qualify to play for their national teams, so they'll leave and add an additional amount of games to that, as well as the Open Cup, so um, our starters and even some of our younger guys will contribute to that team as well and play those Open Cup games. So you're not even looking at just the normal amount of games in their regular MLS season, but you're also looking at the amount of games that they have in Open Cup and national team call-ups. So trainings also um, are longer, you, you know, even on your light active recovery days, you're looking at an hour training and then training schedules can obviously be modified whether or not um, the the guys have played a full 90 minutes, 70 minutes, whether they only played 15. So training schedules on recovery days are different for everybody. But when you look at regular season, regular training schedules on Tuesday, Wednesday, um, you know, the middle of the week, you can look at anywhere from an hour to two hours and pushing maybe two and a half hours. So the intensity and the length of training um, are pretty high. You know, being an elite athlete, being a professional Soccer player intensity has always got to be high, so you're looking at two and a half, two hours of intense training. And then obviously performance. Um, coaches want their athletes to be at the top of their game, and so for the athletic training staff and the medical staff, it's important that we make sure that our guys are performing at the highest level possible and that we can maintain a healthy roster. So what is massage? Um, massage defined as mechanical manipulation of body tissues with rhythmical pressure and stroking for the purpose of promoting health and well-being. So just a little bit more on why we're using massage. Number one, um, recovery. Obviously, that's the first thing anyone wants when they're feeling sore is just a little hands-on stimulation. Let's get some recovery going. Let's get a nice massage. Um, preparation prior to exercise. Now, that's not super common we're not looking at um like deep tissue massages before they go out but we might be looking at maybe some of that vibration massage with a theragun or a hypervolt or whatever it is you use so, so yeah we can do some sort of massage for a few minutes before training and prevention and rehab of injuries um sometimes it is nice to go in there do some manual work with your hands and just focus on getting a light massage for those guys Massage is believed to relieve muscle tension, reduce muscle pain, swelling, and spasm, improve flexibility and range of motion, increase blood flow, and enhance clearance of substances. So looking at that blood lactate, you know, even if you're doing a nice flush, so to say, um, really working on um, clearing and ridding of the, those substances. So the first article is a meta-analysis. Um, it's a massage and performance recovery. Sorry, I realize now that my face might be blocking it. There you go, I hope you can see it now. Um, so in this meta-analysis, there's a total of 22 studies, um, total of 270 subjects. 13 studies showed that there are some positive results, but they were proved to be really small and almost insignificant, but still positive nonetheless. Five studies showed some positive 
um, for certain target parameters, but overall negative effects for the others. And then finally, four studies found only negative performance effects. So I do want to note a disclaimer. Um, the bulk and the, the best massage research that I found was definitely before 2014. Um, so you're looking at an era where massage was all the hype and all the rage. So anything before 2014, so much. But staying to our parameters, um, really hard to find a lot of research, a lot of good research on um, massage now. So come on. Um, I do want to point out the massage time seems to stick out the absolute most to me. So um, the ideal range for massage and the ideal range that proved to have the most benefits um, was actually in the range of 5 to 12 minutes, with 15 minutes or longer having hardly to no, hardly no effect. Um, so I'm going to take that back to my boss, and we're going to scrap the whole 30-minute things because apparently it's not working. Um, but we're looking at 5 to 12 minutes, which is nice. You can get a good massage going and essentially get a lot of people through. Um, they found that massage helped the most in recovery of endurance and sprint performance. So looking at those team sports or those running sports, which soccer is both. Vibration treatments. So again, I mentioned earlier the Hypervolt, the Theragun, um, whatever you use. But vibration treatments um, had to, seemed to have little effect. Now, determining whether or not four minutes was good enough, because some people found results with four minutes with Theragun or Hypervolt or some sort of vibration massage technique, um, while others found absolutely none with 30 minutes, or they did find stuff with 30 minutes. Um, and then the next thing is the benefits for untrained subjects versus their competitive and elite athletes. So there was actually more benefit for the untrained subjects than there was for competitive athletes. Um, and so that just means that those untrained subjects report less soreness um, than competitive athletes. And I'm sure that has to do with, you know, competitive athletes have, have been used to this workload more than untrained subjects. The next thing is massage alleviates um, delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS after strenuous activity, another meta-analysis that we looked at. So, I'm so sorry, my face is in the way. Um, so eight articles use Swedish massage, effleurage and petrosage, usually the deep tissue. Their massage intervention post-strenuous exercise actually showed the most reduction in muscle soreness. Um, and then when you look at that time frame, typically you think of the sooner the better maybe. Um, but have you ever heard of the whole soreness is worse day two than it is day one? With the massage time frame, there actually seemed to be an improvement on 48 and 72 hours post-strenuous exercise. Um, and then finally, there was effectiveness of massage on muscle recovery. I said it before. Um, there was little after intense exercise, but there was some on muscle recovery. So the last one that we're going to look at is massage therapy decreases pain and perceived fatigue after long distance Ironman triathlon, a randomized control trial. So I realize that Ironman is not really the same thing as professional soccer, but they both run, so I think it's pretty close. Um, in this, they looked at pain and obviously perceived fatigue, but there was a reported lower score for fatigue and there was a reported... Um, score for pain using the visual analog scale um, and those that did receive massage treatments post run. The big thing that I want to take away from this is time, 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 time. We want to know what is the ideal time frame for a massage. Are we looking at seeing benefits from 30 minutes, which as I mentioned before, we're not really getting anything past 15 minutes. Um, in this study, however, they noticed that there was change at seven minutes. So again, in between that five to 12 minute timeline is kind of what you're looking at when performing a massage. So it does not have to be an hour long massage to provide benefit. In fact, we might not see any at all. It's the ideal range to be between five and 12 minutes. Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on is although they felt a decrease in muscle soreness and pain and fatigue, there was actually no change in their pain pressure threshold, which I thought was interesting. Um, and so 
if you guys want to keep reading or take a look at those articles, um, I will move my face out of the way one more time. Um, and you can see those articles, take a look, those are all done in the last five years. So you can see 2016 and so on. Um, but that is all I have today. Thank you for watching.